Okay. Today is December 8th, 2015. My name is Edna Sussman. I'm a reference librarian here at the Half Hollow Hills Community Library. We're interviewing Herbert R. Tuckman, a Navy veteran, as part of our Veterans Testimonial Project and in collaboration with the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project. Thank you so much, Herb, for being here today and participating in our project. Herb, where and when were you born? I was born um, March 8, 1933, in New York City, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And who, what were your parents' names and occupations? My parents were um, Isidore and Miriam Tuckman, and they owned a small business, oh. a mom-and-pop business. What kind of Hand business? Hand laundry. Hand laundry. Yeah. Did you have any siblings? No, I'm an only child. And what were you doing before you entered the service? I was going uh, to school for my graduate degrees. Oh. For my teaching and, you know. A teaching. bachelor's or? Ba actually a master's just before I went in. Oh, wow. At what school? Uh, Columbia University. Uh -huh. So it's going to be a master's for teaching? Yes. Mm -hmm. In what subject area? In uh, the sciences, natural science, uh -huh. biology, actually. Is that where you went to undergrad, too? No, I went to undergraduate at Brooklyn College. Uh -huh. Now, which branch of the military did you serve? Uh, the U.S. Navy. Were you uh, enlisted, or did Draft you enlist or drafted? Drafted. Drafted. What happened when you departed for training camp and during your early days of training? Uh, my mother cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and my father said... Take care of yourself. He, he was more optimistic. Mm -hmm. What year was that when you were drafted? Uh, 1955. So after the Korean conflict. He, between Korea and Vietnam. Uh -huh. um, where did you go for training camp? Uh, Bainbridge, Maryland. Mm -hmm. So do you recall your instructors? What, what were they like? Uh, well, actually, the person that stayed in my mind was um, my company commander, whose name I forgot, but I think he may be in the book. Mm -hmm. But he always reminded me of like a Hollywood movie star. He sounded like Clark Abel, <laughs> and uh, he always had that swagger and that class, and uh, we, all, we all just loved him. He was just a great guy. Really? Nice man? Yeah, nice man. You wouldn't... You would imagine a military guy would sort of try to break your back, but he was, I mean, he would get you to do your best, but he had respect for you. Mm -hmm. Did you receive any specialized training, and if so, what was it? Yes, I went for several months to the Navy Medical School, also in Bainbridge, Maryland. Now, did you pick that, or they picked you to do that, or how did that happen? Actually... When you enter the service, the Navy in particular, they give you an aptitude test. Oh. So I scored very high in, uh, in the biological science and in the medical science. And I was also pre-med for a little while at Brooklyn College. Oh. And um, the captain of, who was in charge of the, uh, you know, this guy I was telling you about, he was impressed with my resume and he came to me at the end when we were graduating he said I recommended you for Navy Medical School <laughs> and I said thank you God because <laughs> yeah. I couldn't see myself on the ship mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a physical guy mm -hmm. so I went there for a few months and I graduated as a Navy corpsman and I got assigned to the U U.S. Uh, Navy submarine base at New London mm -hmm. Connecticut which is named Rotten, Connecticut. So the goal of the Navy Medical School was not an MD degree? No. Although at one time, uh, I believe they offered me, if I would re-enlist, they were going to send me to, uh, you know, to Navy Medical School, but I would have to re-enlist, sort of make a career out of it. Oh. And I, at that point, it was not in my plans. Uh -huh. How long was the specialized training? How long did it take? Uh, I think it was either four or six months. I don't remember. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, what exactly does a corpsman do in the Navy? Well, uh, he sort of, um, he'll do first aid. 
he'll assist the doctor just about anything in surgery. With me, it was uh, for a great deal of time I was assisting in delivering babies mm -hmm. at the Dependence Hospital at New London. Mm -hmm. I also did lab work, research, and mm -hmm. blood and urine. I drew blood. Mm -hmm. In fact, I drew blood from, uh, I believe it was the captain of the Nautilus when he came back from the shakedown cruise. Wow. I drew his blood, and I think they sent it up to uh, Bethesda, Maryland, for radiation tests. Oh, wow. So it was a long time ago. I'm, yeah. I'm no, that's that. interesting. Wow. Yeah. How did you adapt to military life, the food, barracks, social life, things like that? Uh, well, my social life was weekends because every Friday afternoon I would go home. Oh. I was very lucky. We to were, New York? To, to New York, Long Island. No, oh. Brooklyn, actually. Brooklyn. I was still living with my parents. Uh -huh. And the food was actually... Uh, where I trained was excellent because I ate in the Naval Hospital oh. and the food was just outstanding. I couldn't believe it. I gained like 10 pounds. Nice. And uh, the, the uh, basic training was pretty hard because, you know, you sleep with 90 guys, mm -hmm. you shower with 90 guys, mm -hmm. and uh, you get up 4 o'clock in the morning, which, although when I started working, I got up at 5, so it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I did pretty well. I, I kind of uh, almost enjoyed it, if you can say that. Uh, how did you sleep in a big... In, in a, we had a bunk beds, mm -hmm. you know, double tier. One, one guy slept on the bottom, one on the top. Uh -huh. In a big hall and, type thing? or in, like a, in a big barracks. Big barracks. And there were 90, 90 uh, guys in there. Ninety guys in the barracks. In one room. In one. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. And, and <laughs> we did everything together: shower, hmm. brush our teeth, so on. So you made some nice friends. Oh yeah. And they were all corpsmen, medical corpsmen. Uh, no, no, oh. they were just out of. Well, there were, I think, about twenty-two draftees, and all of us were professionals. Uh, uh, I was going to be a teacher. The rest of them were pharmacists. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of these guys went into the uh, medical school mm -hmm. to become corpsmen. Mm -hmm. The other guys went on ships, you know, they did. So the, you served from 55 till when? 57. Were you in New London the whole time? No. The last three months I was stationed in Newport, Rhode Island. I was stationed on a ship that was called the Submarine Tender. And what that does, it's like a factory, and it, it services the submarines, repairs them. Uh, if, if they need parts, they manufacture parts. Oh. But it's stationary. It's It was literally nailed to the pier. Hmm. The only time that ship went out was when the World Series was at Yankee Stadium. They would, op they would take unscrew the ship, and we would... Um, it never happened to me because I got out before. But the ship would go up to the Bronx, and they would let the guys go see the e World oh, that's Series. That's nice. So it was kind of like a hospital for ships, submarines. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you didn't serve abroad at all? No. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of friendships and camaraderie did you form while serving, and with whom? Uh, well... In basic training, I made about three or four very close friends that I was seeing for a while after we got out of the service. Oh. And in Navy Medical School, I um, made one or two friends. But after we left the service, we actually really all went our own ways. Mm -hmm. A lot of the guys got married. You didn't keep in touch with them? Uh, just one guy I was very mm -hmm. friendly with, actually two guys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we, you know, we went our ways mm -hmm. and that was it. When you were, you said your social life was pretty much Friday night you went home. Yes, the um, weekends I went home. And then you came back? Except when I was on duty. I was on duty oh. once in a while on a weekend. Oh. So I had to stay there. So it was like a rotation? Yes. And, and when did you come home then? Sunday? Or if you went home? I left the base Friday, usually sometime in the afternoon. I had a report before 6 o'clock on Sunday evening. Okay. How did you get home from there? Um, 
a lot of times I got a lift that my friends had cars. Oh. And they lived near me in Brooklyn, so I would go with them. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, I would take uh, New York Central to train, mm -hmm. and, and then I would go home back to base Sunday night with the train. Mm -hmm. um, when you were stationed there, did you, did you travel? Were you able to do some s traveling on personal traveling? Different parts no, of the country or anything? No, in New London? Yeah. No, we were pretty busy. Uh. You know, it was a, a really like an eight to six kind of job hmm. every day, and we worked in the hospital. And the, the hospital, you said it was for dependents. Were you also yeah. getting uh, people that might have been hurt? Yeah, well, really? we got naval personnel. Yeah, it was also for naval if somebody would get sick. Hmm. So they were, we had a couple of wards, and they were... Uh, Seamen in there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, submariners were in there. Mm -hmm. Now, now, other than going home, what what did you do for recreation or when you were off duty? Oh, they had movies uh, a couple of times a week in the social hall. They had um, they had clubs where we would go if you wanted to grab a beer or a bite. On the base or on the base. Oh, so you could stay on the base and get much yeah. most of everything. Yeah, and they had you know you could shoot pool. You could mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of things actually to do. You can go swimming. They had a pool there. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, and um, but I really you know when I was finished with my day, I went back to my bunk and I was that was it. You must have been. That's a very intense. Job yes. being a medical person, very intense, and it, it, it could be a little stressful sure. because you're dealing, you know, with lives. Yep, yep. And I, I also was at, when I was in obstetrics and gynecology, I, I had maybe eighteen or twenty little babies that I used to have to look after. Wow. You know, you know we would deliver it to the mother for breastfeeding, mm -hmm. and then we would take it back and take care of it the rest of the day. Wow. Well, that's good experience. Yeah. Well, my wife thought <laughs> she figured she had a bargain. I was going to, you know, <laughs> Help change out. the diapers. Right. But then I, had, I was working, had to get up very early, so I had to disappoint her. <laughs> wow. Well, that's even though you're delivering babies and it's a joyful experience, there's some medical issues there. Sure. You really yeah. have to be yeah, you know, concentrating. You're always, you're always dealing with human lives, and the Navy holds you very responsible hmm. for your actions. Sure. So you really got to watch it back. Did while you were working these those two two and a half years? Did you did two they give years, two, two years? years? Did they give you training along the way? To, more training? Uh, no. No. So no, once just, the basic was done, I once mean, once I went out of the medical school, right. I was on my own. You're on your own. Um, now, when your service was done, they, they offered you the choice of continuing? Re well, if I <coughs> wanted to re up, you know, they always asked, do you want to re up? And everybody said, no. No. Well, I, I had plans. I was really, my whole career was set out years ago. Really? I wanted to teach. Uh, first, I wanted, well, medical school didn't work out uh -huh. after very quick quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you tried I, it? You, well, I was pre-med and then my grades weren't that, I didn't feel it was great, I didn't feel my parents could afford it, mm -hmm. you know, there were other issues, quotas, mm -hmm. you know, in those days, uh, and there were no student loans in those days. Uh -huh. So I decided I was going into college teaching, mm -hmm. and I had gone for my master's, and then I was drafted, and then I was waiting, because I was when I came out, I had to go for, get my doctorate. Mm -hmm. Wait, you finished the master's before you were drafted? Yes. Oh. They had given me a deferment. Oh, so you could finish your degree first. So I could first. finish my degree at Columbia. And then you had to go in and like, And I did that in one year, oh. and at the end of the year, I like nearly collapsed. You did your master's in one year? In one year, and I was working full-time. Doing what? As a laboratory teacher oh. in a high school. Wow. How did you do that? I looked back. Not easy. I was taking courses. I used to come home every night uh, at 11 o'clock. That's when I had dinner. And then I would get up the next morning at 5 because I had to be in school at 7. It, so you lived at home while you went yes, to got your master's? Yes, my parents. Mm -hmm. Sure. How far was that? Brooklyn to Columbia? How long did that take you? Oh, an, uh, like an hour, 20 minutes. An hour. I did all my homework. 
Um, well, my coursework was on the train. Wow. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. So then you finished your master's, and then you were, then you had to go and in. And then I, I asked to have my number called up because uh -huh. I wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And I did. And uh, when I got back after uh, my Navy service, I went to NYU for my doctorates, and that didn't turn out. Oh. I had problems there with some of the professors. So there were five of us, three of us dropped out because mm -hmm. we weren't happy with the program. And I went into, I taught high school. Then you got a job teaching. Yes, I got a okay. job teaching. That's, really, I mean, a master's is still, that's all that's required of yeah. teaching. Well, I had, I had almost my doctorate. You I almost was, did. I was 18 credits short of my doctorate, plus the thesis. Wow. And, but I had to leave. It was just untenable there. Really? Yeah. What subject were you, was it education? Doctor? Science education. I was going to get, go into a field where I was training teachers. I see. Science teachers. So how long did you teach high school then? Well, I taught high school for about 15 years, and then the rest of my tenure there, I was about 20 years, I was a guidance counselor oh, in wow. high school. Did you have to get more Yes, I had schooling? to go for a third degree for uh, my master's in guidance, oh, okay. which I went to CW Post for. Uh -huh. Now, at what point did you uh, meet your wife, and how did that happen? Well, I met my wife uh, shortly after I got out of the Navy. I started teaching. In at, Brooklyn? Or no? In Brooklyn, yes. yeah, in a Brooklyn high school. And then it was a very, the first year of teaching is very rough, especially when you're in high school, because you have to write out lesson plans. Mm -hmm. So I, at the end of the uh, year, I said, I, ha I need a vacation. Mm -hmm. So I gathered five of my friends, and I gave them a choice. Do you want to go to Tamerman for vacation or, or a Green Mansions? Those are the two resorts oh. of, you know, were very popular. Uh -huh. And they kind of catered to teachers and doctors and all that. Where, where were they? Uh, Tamerman was in Pennsylvania, and Green Mansions was up near the Finger Lakes mm -hmm. in Warrensburg, New York. Mm -hmm. And as fate has it, my wife was there, huh. and we met, and uh, the rest is history. Nice. Wow. Yeah, was... Did you you have children? Yes. Well, I, I had two sons, and one passed away four oh, years sorry. ago. Oh, wow. sorry. Oh, wow. 49 and, years old. Oh. And the other one has... The other one's a doctor now. He has a family? Yes. He's up at Stony Brook and mm -hmm. uh, has two wonderful grandchildren. And my other son, I have two granddaughters from him. Oh, they wow. live like five minutes from me. Oh, the, they live local. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, they live in, uh, also in Melville. Huh. Now, um, how when you were finished with your service, how were you received by your family and community? How did that... How was that? Uh... It was nothing extraordinary. I came home. I remember even the day, it was a hot day in August, I was carrying my personal stuff in my Navy uniform. Mm -hmm. And as I reached my house, I was ripping off my neckerchief. <laughs> and I came in, I said, Mom, I'm home. She said, oh, good, I'll make you dinner. <laughs> and that, then I went, that was it. Did they I know you were coming home then? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they knew that the exact date when I was coming home. How did you readjust to civilian life? Very easy. Really? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I came home, I took off my uniform, I put on my civilians, <laughs> and I started planning for my first day of teaching, which was in wow. September. Had you, was this job waiting for you when you got out, or you had to start looking for the job? I had to start looking. Actually, I had to start, in New York City, you take a test. <laughs> I took a teaching test. First, it was a substitute teacher. So that I, I started doing that. And then I went for the regular license, which is much more protracted. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I passed that, and, and that mm -hmm. was it. I went into teaching. So you wanted high school? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I decided after that I wanted to go into some sort of administrative. Mm -hmm. So I was I took some... Uh, assistant principal exams, which I passed. Oh. But at that time, the courts threw out the license because it was not uh, ethnically diversified. In other words, it was they wanted some uh, uh, black Americans to teach in the black community. So okay. they 
they turned it over to the community board to pick who they wanted to hire rather than the civil service list. Oh, wow. I don't... So that, they threw my exam out. Is that legal? Was that legal? <laughs> nobody said anything. I don't know. But they threw the exam out. And wow. I, that was it. So then I decided maybe I'll go for guidance. And mm -hmm. I took the guidance exam and I passed and I was appointed. Which and, did you like? You liked them both? Well, yeah. When I, when I was teaching, um, as I told you before, I was asked by the chairman to set up a curriculum for... Uh, kids who are interested in going into the health careers, doctors, uh, uh, nurses, EMs, mm -hmm. dentists. It was called paramedicine, which I believe is still being used today in the schools. Wow, really? So I wrote the curriculum, and I taught the classes, and I had them assigned to different hospitals, and I absolutely loved that. Nice. I couldn't wait Monday morning. I was the only teacher in the city wow. who I think looked forward to Monday morning. <laughs> wow. And I love that. And then uh, my wife says, why don't you go take the guidance exam, you know? Why? So, because it meant, uh, first of all, it meant getting out of the classroom. Uh -huh. And it was a, a raise in pay. Uh -huh. And I was, I guess, more uh, stat, you know, it was a little more prestigious. Uh -huh. Huh. So that was for, then you got a job in a high school as a counselor? As a guidance, guidance counselor, counselor, yeah. High school still? Yes, yes. always, yes. Um, and you said you didn't really remain in contact with any fellow veterans at all, or just well, one? Well, I, when I was I got out, we were, I was friends with a couple of them. And uh, then what happened was I met my wife. Mm -hmm. So then that was the end of that. I mm -hmm. couldn't, you know, go out Saturday night with him to dances or whatever we used to do. Right, right. And uh, Where did you live? In Brooklyn with, when you were yeah, married? Yeah, I lived in East Flatbush. With your wife? No, oh. I lived with my parents. Right. Then when we got married, I lived in Jackson Heights, uh -huh. Queens. And then from there, we moved to Laurelton. Laurelton. And then from there to Long Island. To Long Island. So how do you think your military experiences affected your life? I think it added a, a whole dimension to my life. I mean... Uh, First of all, I got extremely interested in medicine, and to this day, I'm always, my ears always perk up when there's something new in medicine, or there's an article in medicine, I'm always reading it. And I think I had a profound effect on my youngest son, who went and became a doctor. Huh. He kind of, because I always talking about, uh, you know, I, I wanted him to be a doctor, and he did. Did he, is he a, what kind of doctor is he? Well, he started out as GI, uh -huh. and he, he wasn't too happy with that. Now he's doing, he does a general practitioner, and he works in Stony Brook. Nice. He's uh, one of the uh, college doctors. They have that, um, the health clinic, mm -hmm. you know, where, you, where the doctors and professors go if they're not well. And he's one of the doctors. Oh, there, nice. nice. Which is very nice, man. What are some life lessons you might have learned from military service? Well, I learned how to be clean and neat. My <laughs> wife loves that, you know. That's great. Hang my clothes up, pack it, because they were on your head, boy. If you really? Didn't, yeah. You had to fold your shirts a different, certain way and your underwear a certain way. <laughs> and they gave you a locket that was like 12 by 4. And you can't imagine what was fitted in there because we folded and, uh -huh. you know. It was a lo like a cl little closet? Yeah, a little, you know, one of these shipboard lockers. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, how has your military service impacted your feelings about the military or war or in general? Or? Well, I have a great, great respect for the military and the people who served there, and I realize what, what a sacrifice it is. Yeah. I was, I think, considerably lucky mm -hmm. Because I, I had a cushy job, I mean, there's no question. I wasn't in any battles or mm -hmm. wars, and, and I, you know, I, I, I know what I could have been because as a, as a medic, uh, the corpsmen are usually assigned to the Fleet Marine Corps. Oh. And when these guys go into battle, when they land on the beaches, there are 200 guys who land and there's a medic with them. Could have been me. Sure. And it, it, just for the you know, fate, whatever you want to call it, I just missed Vietnam because I could have been there with the with the Marines in Vietnam as their medic mm. when they went into the jungle. Wow. 
very so lucky. I think about, yeah, 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 sometimes. But when you, in the fift, late 50s, when you were serving, there was, it was peacetime. It was peace. The only thing we were worried one time, there was an incident on the Suez Canal when uh, NASA, you know, the head yep. of, he was threatening to nationalize the canal and close it down. So Britain, Israel, and I think France sent troops so he wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And Eisenhower, who was president, mm -hmm. was very upset that he threatened, you know, he was going to send American troops. Mm -hmm. to, and so we were put, we were put on alert. <laughs> wow. And I said, we were looking at each other, they said, we're going to be going to war. Uh, you remember what year that was? Yeah, it was, uh, I think, 1956. Uh, so in the middle it's, of your service. Yeah, it was called the Suez Crisis. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then it all fizzled out. Mm -hmm. So you weren't sent abroad at all? No, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. Um, what message would you like to leave for future generations who might view this interview? Well, I think uh, I got a real patriotic thrust when I was in the service, and I realized what a marvelous country we live in. And I mean, even in the service, the respect that I received and the, the, the care, and it was just wonderful. And mm -hmm. I think that the kids nowadays take all that for granted. Mm -hmm. And some of these kids are even trying to undermine, yeah. you know, what's going on, especially on the college campuses. Mm -hmm. They don't realize what their, their plight could be. Yeah. When you read the news, you know, you can... You look in other countries, so I think they really should understand that, um, you know, we're, we're the best country on earth, yeah. bar, none, bar none, even with all our faults. Okay. So, and I still feel that way. So, That's I'm great. very pro, mm -hmm. I'm very patriotic, pro America, pro. Nice. Do you think some some of the vets have told me they think, as in Israel, every young person should serve, do some time? It should be mandatory. Um, How do you feel about that? I think it's okay, although I have grandchildren. And, uh, you know, it's easy to serve in the military, and before you turn around, these guys are going off to some foreign country, right. which, you know, sort of makes me very upset. I don't want my, my grandchildren being in uh, Iraq or sure. Afghanistan. I mean... It's a terrible thing, so uh, I have mixed emotions about yeah. it. I, I know it would do them good, mm -hmm. but I... I, I a scary I thing. Yeah. When you were drafted, there was a draft then. Everyone yes. had to serve. Everybody had to serve. Yeah. Well, males, females. Right, and, right. Yeah, we all were drafted. And then after a while, they, they changed that. For example, um, if you were a science teacher or if you're anything in the science, you're exempt. So Aww. I missed that. Mm -hmm. And then if when you were married mm -hmm. and you had a child, you were exempt. Oh. So I missed that also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like I said, as it turns out, it was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel sorry for myself. Yeah. Was... You actually learned a lot being in the medical corps. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, so... my wife calls me an HD What's as that? opposed to an MD. Oh. A half a doctor. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you probably learned just as much, though, doing what you did. Well, almost. I mean, I a lot of practical stuff. Mm -hmm. I was sewing guys up. Oh, really? And they would come in with cuts, and I, oh. I would have, they'd give you a kit, and you would sew them up and put a bandage on them. I, mean, I did things, wow. when I look back, it's amazing. Amazing. Assisted in delivering babies. Wow. Were you yeah. there when your children were born? Uh, no. And unfortunately, we had signed up for it, but the stipulation was that you had to have a natural birth. Uh -huh. So my first son was born. My wife, I mean, you know what a birth is like. She couldn't take it, mm -hmm. so they threw me out of the room. Oh, really? Room. Oh, too bad. And I had to sleep in the lobby and oh. wait for her. Wow, too bad, because you had seen so many other babies born yeah, before. Yeah, well, that would have been a kick. Yeah. Yeah, but no. Um, so you weren't injured during your service? No. Oh. Um, is there anything you did that you regretted while you were serving? Uh, not really. 
I mean, you know, I could have re-opted and continued on, but it wasn't a life for me. Re-opting was going to be how much longer? Well, four more years, uh -huh. and then who knows what. And actually, what, what would have happened, I would have wound up in the Vietnam War. What, but that's, I thought that's... That was the early 60s. Early 60s. So I got right. out in 57. It would have been 61 right. plus whatever. Right. So it worked out. Sometimes fate, yeah. you know. Yeah. Wow. Um, is there anything you feel we haven't discussed that you'd like to add? Any, any experiences you've had or events that you can think of you might like to share? Um... You mean in the service? Yes, yeah. No, I think those are the, the main highlights. Uh, you know, I, when, you, when you look, I, I guess you've seen a lot of veterans. I mean, these guys probably have stories. Yeah, but your stories are equally as interesting. Yeah, but really. they were in war, and they were, some of them were resentful, you know, that they had to go into Vietnam and stuff. Yeah, but so. delivering, delivering and healing servicemen is just yeah. as important, really. It's wonderful that you learn to do that. I don't, you have to have a certain type of uh, disposition. Yeah, well, I, I, I've always loved medicine. Really? And to me, the greatest feeling is if I make a person well, mm -hmm. if I fit, have a fit, or, or help him get rid of pain, or mm -hmm. huh, mm -hmm. get rid of pain or discomfort, and like my wife says, you know, she gets a little annoyed and she says, you're always giving advice. <laughs> and, I, you know, when somebody tells me, I, this hurts me, that, I tell them, well, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Maybe you're not doing it. That's right. terrific. It's just a natural really? reaction of mine. Wow. Because I have this feeling, you know, mm -hmm. this is very important to me. Were you an EMT at a, when you got out? Did you pursue that no, as an aside? I just never had any time for that. Yeah, yeah. But I did take... Um, Years ago, I took uh, what I call, re you know, the resuscitation. Oh, CPR. C CPR. Mm -hmm. I took that several times. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. In fact, as a result of that, we once went to a wedding many years ago, and there was an elderly gentleman, I think it was the grandfather of the bride, was dancing and just fell to the floor, had a heart attack. And my niece and I, my niece was a doctor at the time, we both did the CPR, I did the compression, she wow. did the breath, and we we re restored him. You resuscitated him? Resuscitated him. Unfortunately, several days later, he died in the hospital. He was like 90 years uh -huh, old. So uh -huh. it was, wow, amazing. But that was... You think your medical training in the Navy helped? Uh, well, it gave me impetus, but and there was another incident in the restaurant. We were going to tell us one mm -hmm. evening, we ate, there was a restaurant which is now out of business. And we... And Till is the Performing Arts Center? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we were reading, my wife and I, and some young couple was there, and the guy all of a sudden turns on, he couldn't breathe. He was turning blue, and his wife became hysterical, started crying. I turn around, and the manager starts, does anybody know CPR? Mm -hmm. And I was sitting right next to him, so... Wow. Wow. I wasn't going to let him die. Yeah. That would have been, you know... So I went over, and I did the Heimlich maneuver uh -huh. on him. And sure enough, a big piece of chicken went flying out. Wow. And uh, Terrific. I saved his life. And yeah. Terrific. A good feeling, yeah. it is. And, you know, never forgot it. I'm sure not. And he probably didn't either. No, no. <laughs> wow. No. Well, thank you, Herb, so much yeah. for your service and for sharing everything with us. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate that you recognize us or me, you know, particular. We can't thank you enough. No yeah. matter what you did, thank you. Right, okay, thank you.